Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, thanks for joining today's session, which is all on NetSuite payroll. Um, so we're going to take you through um, with our colleagues from Infinite Clouds, uh, the payroll solution that's available for, for NetSuite customers. So I'll hand over shortly to, to Wayne Crosland and Tristan Day from Infinite Clouds. Um, he'll take you through an overview and demo of the solution, which runs completely within NetSuite. Um, we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers uh, towards the end of the session. If you have any questions as we go along, you can use the Q&A panel um, at the bottom of your screen to ask the questions, and then we'll cover them towards the end of the session. So yeah, uh, I'll hand over to Wayne first of all um, to take you through the overview. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Well, welcome all to the uh, Infinite Cloud uh, Payroll for NetSuite webinar, sponsored by um, our partner Eureka Solutions. So I'd like to thank Eureka for organizing this and obviously thank you all for attending uh, today. So my name is Wayne Crossland, I'm the sales director for the UK and co-presenting with me will be Tristan Day, who is our uh, general manager. So the format for today will be a, a brief overview of Infinite Cloud, followed by an overview from Tristan of a live uh, payroll system inside NetSuite. So just a bit of a uh, background on Infinite Cloud. Uh, so the founders of our company previously worked for NetSuite um, out of Maidenhead uh, in the early 2000s and identified back then that there was no on-platform payroll for NetSuite. So they subsequently uh, formed Infinite Cloud uh, in Australia uh, in 2009 and then rapidly expanded into the UK and uh, the New Zealand jurisdictions as well. So we're part of NetSuite's uh, developer network, which is commonly referred to as the SDN channel. Uh, and we have been since 2010. In fact, we were one of the original STEM partners, um, and this means that we are certified, tested, and held accountable by NetSuite. So NetSuite is the only ERP system that we work with. Um, in 2014, we won the Global STM Partner of the Year Award, and uh, more recently, in 2020, uh, won the same award, uh, which is the, um, the only time that uh, an STM partner has won that twice. So we're very proud of our achievements. Next slide, please, Tristan. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, a little bit of an overview uh, based on a study uh, recently done by the Chartered Institute of Payroll Professionals, or CIPP, and they conducted it uh, earlier this year, more around the impact of COVID-19 on the payroll sector. Um, so there's some interesting stats up there, but the I suppose the real, the upshot of the report is that it all points to two underlying factors the literal physical availability and the accessibility to the critical systems involved in running payroll, as well as the disparate nature of the payroll data within organizations. So many third par party payroll systems uh, re reside on physical infrastructure and require VPNs to access and operate, as well as access to other systems holding payroll information that is required to complete a pay run process or they are using a bureau, which adds additional steps to that pay run process. With new legislation being rapidly introduced and payroll teams uh, are having to constantly update their systems, if it is possible, and access payroll information to build the required reports, not, ju not just from a compliance perspective for uh, HMRC, but also to report on the key business metrics affected by the cost of payroll. So having the payroll uh, system as part of your financial system delivered via a secure cloud-based solution is what we will be uh, discussing today. Next slide, please, Tristan. So, um, Infinite Cloud is a native application. We are actually part of the NetSuite solution. All of our functionality is accessed through NetSuite and we take full advantage of the NetSuite unified single database, referencing NetSuite classifications such as department, class, and location, as well as interacting with NetSuite time records and various modules such as NetSuite project management. But being native module within NetSuite, we directly interact with the general ledger and the chart of accounts. We create the necessary journals using core NetSuite uh, classifications. There is no need to import journals from an external system. We are a finance-based application and we live within the core NetSuite database. And these are the main reasons we are chosen as the payroll solution for many NetSuite customers. So to us, it's more than payroll. It's about providing the visibility and the detail of what would typically be the largest cost within an organization. So we see payroll as a strategic business function that allows our customers to make evidence-based decisions based on the data we produce. 
So in terms of Infinite Cloud uh, by numbers, uh, so we've been going for 11 years. Uh, we've been in the UK since 2013. Um, we're well established and we have over 650 uh, customers globally. In fact, the United Kingdom is a key jurisdiction for our company and we've experienced rapid growth recently with over 22 customers added last year alone. But one of the reasons why so many customers have chosen us, and I'll refer to the uh, center of the screen there, the sweetapp.com site, is because of the effort that we put into making our customers happy and referenceable. And there's no better validation of this than the number of reviews we have received on sweetapp.com. We are the highest rated native app in the world. And we always encourage our prospective customers uh, to read those references as many of the journeys they have undertaken will be similar to your own. Some of our customers in the UK, um, there's a few in there that uh, we share with uh, Eureka Solutions, Luton Town Football Club and DeliverNet. Um, uh, two, they're using uh, our payroll software. So we're a horizontal application uh, and we range in size from our smallest, which is about five employees, up to our largest, which is Clean Linen, who have over 1,200 employees paid on a weekly basis and 400 paid on a monthly basis. In fact, Clean Linen is a great example of how a customer has been able to uh, use NetSuite and the Infinite Cloud data to calculate the pence per piece to launder an individual item. And as you can appreciate, the volumes are in the hundreds of thousands of items laundered each month. Uh, and it is paramount that they have the visibility and the detail of their costs. Uh, the labor force being the largest, um, but because we are native and inside NetSuite, our data in combination with the other business data is an integral part of their overall key performance reporting and the underlying calculations. We have another uh, case study uh, here, Unomia, more of a recent one. Um, so Unomia is an independent consultancy firm uh, helping clients achieve a better environmental outcome. Uh, Unomia needed a new finance system to drive growth and improvements in their execution. NetSuite was selected because it had financials, CRM and project management all within a single unified platform and most importantly a single database. But being a consultancy firm the largest cost within their business was the payroll. So they would outgrown their existing uh, system and they needed to improve on the uh, level of reporting and analysis to gain a better understanding of their labour costs within the wider context of their business. So for the cloud was the perfect choice uh, to replace their old uh, payroll system because we are native to NetSuite, the users were already familiar with the interface, which we see shortly in the demo, but the real benefit was having our data available alongside other financial data within the core NetSuite system. So the outcome was we were able to reduce a large amount of inefficiencies and manual processes that existed with the old payroll system. And this is quite common across uh, all of our customers, um, but we were able to provide the detailed reporting they needed in order to drive their growth and improve their execution. So the last slide, just to recap, uh, before I hand you over to, uh, to Tristan, the key thing here is that we are a native NetSuite finance base application, um, referencing that single unified NetSuite database. And this is what enables payroll to be uh, used as a, a strategic business function. So uh, for the fun part now, I shall hand you over to Tristan. Thank you all. Thank you, Wayne, and good morning, everyone. I'm just going to switch over to my uh, demo account and we shall proceed from there. And hopefully this is all uh, looking immediately familiar to you all. Uh, we are, of course, inside NetSuite. Everything you see today is going to be inside NetSuite. As we mentioned, we are a native application. Uh, what that also means is that along with the uh, regular updates that we do every year in line with the legislation, uh, which is our commitment to the jurisdiction, we will make sure that we keep in line with those. Uh, we are also going to be doing testing and releases in line with the NetSuite release path. Uh, the 20.2 release, as you'll all be aware, is imminent. Uh, and we have had access to those test accounts now uh, for a while so that we can make sure that all of our functionality and capabilities are going to be uh, a part of that seamless upgrade. As a result, all of our uh, functionality works in your sandbox and in your release preview accounts uh, to make sure that whereas NetSuite will hopefully be the last ERP you ever need uh, and won't ever need to change it because of the constant upgrade path, uh, the same logic will also apply to uh, your payroll system as well. 
And as I mentioned, along with the uh, NetSuite commitment, of course, we are also on the gov.uk website because we go through our HMRC accreditation and testing every single year as well. So when we are looking at a uh, payroll process and of course uh, uh, from, a, from a NetSuite perspective, uh, there are always two uh, lenses that we want to look at this information in. Uh, one is what is the employee output uh, from a standard payroll processing perspective? How do we get to the correct net pay? Uh, and the other is the employer output. How do we get the correct allocations of costs, journals and other reporting? And uh, because we are built using standard NetSuite capabilities, uh, the skill set that you already have within your business will serve you very, very well with our payroll solution. Because the vast majority of our reports are done using save searches. Uh, our stuff works with the new suite analytics uh, capabilities that NetSuite are rolling out as well. Uh, and whilst many of these will be quite appropriate uh, for most businesses, uh, inevitably, uh, particularly in the NetSuite uh, ecosystem, uh, customers do have very specific requirements, uh, which is absolutely fine for us because you can just go uh, and customize these searches uh, and make them work how you want them to. So one of the things that is even more specific to every business, of course, is the metrics that you run your business on uh, and the heartbeat uh, of the decision making that comes through your dashboards. And whether or not you want a finance heavy dashboard uh, for the CFO or the finance director or something that's a bit more payroll specific uh, from a processing perspective. Uh, and of course, we're in one of our roles up here because all of our information uh, is restricted on a permissions basis. We, we know how much sensitive payroll data is uh, because it is all just next week records. It can all be referenceable uh, both in the searches and in your scorecards, KPIs and other reporting which gives us the ability once we have been through the payroll process to be able to easily break down costs by location uh, to easily break down you know what is the cost per square meter of uh, a warehouse uh, for the operations and dispatch and pick pack and ship uh, or indeed as we mentioned for clean linen for uh, breaking down what the uh, costs are for pence per piece of, of laundry. So within your business, if there is a labor related cost and metric that is there, uh, we would love to talk about that to see how we can give you that to the penny analysis uh, and make sure you can get in there. And it doesn't just stop there. Uh, it also breaks down into the general ledger. Uh, so where you are having to have that kind of reporting, which we'll look at in a moment, uh, to be audited uh, for grant applications and things like that. Uh, we do a lot of good stuff with the Institute of Occupational Medicine, for example, uh, who have very high audit requirements for Horizon 2020. But of course, whilst you're processing the payroll, uh, one of the things that we want to make sure we get to uh, is at the first instance, the proper cost allocations and making sure uh, that we are uh, putting the money in the right place and that we're able to deal with exceptions. So in a seamless environment, uh, when we get to the uh, end of our process, uh, we're able to easily drill down uh, using NetSuite reporting into the various elements that we've actually got within our pay run. For the purposes of today, I'm going to be using a subset of our employees with a, a very wide range of uh, configurations. Uh, we've got uh, some people on a salary on a 38 hour week. Uh, we've got a waged employee that only gets paid for uh, the time that they actually work uh, and indeed uh, only accrues leave on that timesheet as well. Uh, all the way through to our executive Lawrence who we're going to be looking at in a little bit more detail. And of course, some of the changes that we've had to deal with recently, uh, most recently, of course, is the Welsh rate of income tax. Uh, the Scottish rate of income tax came in uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and as part of our managed update process, uh, that was just deployed seamlessly overnight into our customers' accounts, uh, followed up with information on how to use and execute that uh, all as part of the license fee. So if we look at Lawrence, uh, where we do not have to duplicate data, we will not duplicate data. So this is the unified NetSuite employee record. Uh, whether or not you are running all of your uh, data records within NetSuite, uh, or if you are bringing in information from a third party HR system, uh, again, clean 1200 people managed in a third party HR system, their, their import process, because they do it by CSV, takes them about 30 minutes every single week. Uh, and creates all of the salaries and pay reviews and all those sorts of things for them. 
But all we're doing when we do that, uh, or when you're managing it within the NetSuite, uh, is completing NetSuite fields. So the standard fields, first name, last name, we're going to use. We're going to initially cost everything to uh, what we call a home bucket uh, for the department class location. Uh, we also work with custom segments uh, and all of the other advanced NetSuite capabilities uh, that are available. And then as we move down the form, we get these first five tabs belong to us. Uh, we are giving you a form that is very payroll centric to make sure that the job can be executed uh, appropriately. Uh, we've got our reporting for employment statuses, pay types. Uh, we're gonna deliver an email by uh, an encrypted PDF to a personal email, or indeed it can also be downloaded from the NetSuite Employee Center uh, and through that portal as well. We are working on our different working patterns. Uh, the bundle does include leave management. Uh, so if you do have leave management requirements, uh, please do uh, contact your account manager. We're happy to talk about that uh, in a separate conversation. Uh, we also are complying with uh, auto enrollment legislation. Uh, again, these are uh, auto enrollment is tagged one to one from a, an employee perspective, uh, but it can, of course, uh, have as many uh, as the um, uh, schemes as you do have. And in fact, some of our customers have four or five uh, different auto enrollment schemes, uh, and they can all be configured on a per entitlement basis. Uh, whether that is using the earnings trigger or uh, uh, the lower qualified earnings and all those sorts of things. But where we really start to see uh, the system take on board and where we see the decision makers actually getting into what we're doing it is as a financially driven and strategic uh, uh, system uh, and where the key one uh, key parts of that comes from is where we're talking about uh, payroll expense allocation. Now, uh, a lot of our customers uh, are in the uh, ex just in expenses, uh, you know, software companies uh, uh, and all those sorts of things. They just have one line for uh, or one category for their payroll expenses, and it is as an expense. But they might have, whereas clean, have cost of goods. They might have other expenses that need to be capitalized, and they need to manipulate where all this is going to be set out in the general ledger. Of course, if you are using a third party system, that's going to be a very complicated import. Uh, but for us, it is all about just grouping the employees into the appropriate expenses. Uh, and then that's going to fall through uh, seamlessly into our cost allocations and all those sorts of things. Where we are bringing people on board into the system, of course, we do need to do an employee enrollment. Uh, so we take care of all that. We take care of uh, pinging that information in, being able to give guidance in terms of what tax code uh, based on the present circumstances. Uh, and we're also integrating with HMRC on the data provisioning service uh, to retrieve any tax code notifications, student loan start stops uh, and all those sorts of things as well. Once the employee has been onboarded, of course, uh, then we can start looking at building up their remuneration. Uh, and this is all based on the uh, uh, capabilities for yourselves to configure uh, and manage this as you need to. So we're very big on knowledge transfer. We want to show you how the system works. We want you to be able to manage it yourself. And the vast majority of our customers, in fact, all of our customers, unless they have been through an acquisition and they need to deal with different terms and conditions or their requirements change, do not come back to us after the first year of support and go live and migration uh, because they have been uh, made a, a, aware of how the system works and, and can go and manage it. And that in combination uh, with our ability to uh, push updates uh, makes it a very seamless experience for them. So uh, when we are uh, processing through into our payroll, one of the biggest changes that we tend to see uh, is the ability for our customers to build the pay run throughout the, the, uh, the period. So uh, when we are actually doing that, uh, for example, on our pay run that we're running here, uh, we've got our employees, we've got some notes that we've made against these employees, we've got some payments that have been put in that are one-off payments that need to be processed. Uh, and this information is going to sit there and can be entered uh, either through the user interface, uh, can be imported through CSV, or, or indeed can be created using workflow or scripts. So if you have logic around your payments that, that need to be manipulated, uh, we want to build that pay run up throughout the period. Uh, because the uh, payroll processing week uh, probably right now is uh, a little bit of a rush and a lot about data entry. And we want to turn that into more about reconciliation and analysis. 
So when we are going to run that payroll and everything is in place for us to go and do that, uh, we are going to work in a one world environment if necessary. Uh, we're going to work on a monthly, weekly, fortnightly or bi-monthly pay period basis. Uh, we're going to start with our period start dates, our pay dates, uh, and we're going to actually skip a lot of the stages that we've got up here uh, because everything is ready to go into the system. Of course, uh, we also do IR35 as well now. Uh, that's going to be a requirement for everybody from uh, April onwards. Uh, and in this instance, we've got our employees uh, in the system that we're ready to go and submit and create that pay run which gives us to the point where they are then ready to be approved. Uh, as you can see here, we can also add employees to the pay run and indeed roll back and completely leave no trace. So the uh, ability to uh, bring people in at the last minute, uh, to be able to delete a pay slip from the pay run, uh, we want to make it as accurate as possible. Uh, but where there is the scenario where uh, there's a particular issue around someone's remuneration or a calculation or a query, let's just take them out of the pay run. Let's pay everybody else because our licensing doesn't care how many times you pay people. We don't care how many pay runs you do. Uh, if you want to pay a different hundred people every month and uh, have a hundred percent churn, we don't care about that either. Uh, all we care about is the number of discrete employees that are actually being paid on a per period basis. And once we are into that point, once we are into those pay slips, we're able to manually add uh, individual payments to them. Uh, we can come in and we can edit uh, any of the payments on here to make sure that it is correct. It isn't until this has actually been paid uh, and approved through the system that you can't make changes to it, which means the number of adjustments that our customers do uh, compared to historical systems is vastly reduced because of the agile nature of the ability for us to go and change things. And what that means is that when we then do deliver a, a pay slip, uh, whether you want it to look as simple as payments and deductions uh, or whether we want it to have uh, a little bit more about it and uh, show the uh, payroll benefits in kind in a separate box and break all this out, uh, put some messaging down at the bottom uh, if you've got the internal skill set, you can manipulate all of this yourself. Uh, but of course, we have quite a few options available to us as part of our bundle as well. Before we can get to the approval stage, of course, uh, we want to make sure that we've got all of our reporting in place, uh, whether that is going to be via exception uh, or comparison. Um, and it also includes things like your pension exports. Uh, so we do work with quite a lot of pension providers uh, and we offer a CSV export uh, for you to go and uh, upload that into your pension provider. Uh, inevitably, these will be customized because every pension provider, even every customer within a pension provider in our experience can be different. Uh, but as an example, uh, using the uh, uh, hopefully industry standard PAP disk export, uh, you can come into this from a, uh, a, a pay run, you can download it uh, and then you can take it away and upload it into your system. Prior to that, of course, if we want to get a breakdown of our gross to net, we can restrict this to the pay run as we have done here, uh, which gives us a gross pay, taxable income, pay, PAYE, employee national insurance. Uh, you could break this out. Instead of doing a pay run, you could do it on a pay, rate, on a pay date range. You could do it on a tax year. Uh, so it's very easy to get year to date information, to get uh, as at information uh, across a whole range of dates, a, a specific employee, a specific department, any other criteria that you have in the system that we can put into the searches makes it very straightforward for you to go and interrogate that information. From a processing perspective, of course, uh, we mentioned the processing notes that we were looking at earlier. So we've got some of the notes that we've got in there uh, for our processing. Uh, we can flag up whether it's been a tax code change, whether uh, the employee has been auto enrolled in this period. Uh, we can have messaging that uh, triggers on those sorts of things, depending on your requirements. Uh, as well, uh, because using the NetSuite uh, uh, templates and all the NetSuite capabilities uh, gives you a very, very finite control and granular control over what you actually want to do with your system, uh, something that is only possible by virtue of the fact that we are built inside of NetSuite. 
So once we are happy with all of our pay run, we can then move to approving our pay slips. Uh, we support all the major banks. So we're working with Barclays, HSBC, NatWest, RBS, Lloyds, etc. Uh, but if you work with uh, other banks or, or indeed foreign banks, you know, we're working with Wells Fargo at the moment. Uh, we've done the Silicon Valley Bank. So long as there's a schema and it can be uh, receive a file through CSV or uh, XML or anything like that, uh, we're happy to take on the work to do those those file formats because we want to make sure that we are uh, supporting as many banks as we possibly can. And once that is actually approved, we then get to the point where we've got our EFT file, which we can then download uh, and upload into our bank. Uh, but perhaps most importantly, when we start talking about our employer uh, uh, outputs, uh, we're looking at our journals for our posting transaction uh, and our payment transaction for those initial home buckets. Now, depending on what your requirements are for your journals, uh, this is the most common configuration that we see where we're grouping by uh, the nominal code, the department class, and location, we've got our debits, our credits, all created seamlessly, tagging against the liabilities for uh, all of our suppliers. So that falls into your normal accounts payable managements. Uh, we also have the ability to make payments using the net pay file, uh, which we commonly see done where there are uh, court orders and earning arrestment orders uh, and all those sorts of things. We just get those out with the net pay. Uh, and then of course you can just uh, go and deal with the, the HMRC payments or the pension will be done by a direct debit, depending on the terms and conditions of the agreement that you have with the relevant providers. Of course, it could be as simple as just two lines. You know, we could set the GL code as, as the same for uh, all of the uh, debits, uh, one credit, uh, and do no grouping whatsoever. Uh, and then you can just rely on the payroll reporting that we have within the system to go and get that. Uh, so the control and manipulation that we have within the general ledger is very, very advanced uh, and really does completely remove uh, the journal uh, reconciliation requirements uh, that you might be used to if you are having to import them into NetSuite. Of course, once we have done that and that it has been approved, we then meet, need to move on to the RTI stage. Uh, so we've got our FPS, uh, which we then want to have a look at. We want to check it. We want to make sure it's all right. Uh, we can then submit that to HMRC, which gives us uh, a nice green box saying that is complete. It is a closed loop. So we've got not only a GovTalk response from uh, HMRC. Uh, we've also got the raw data and the underlying XML submission, uh, which is a challenge to everyone. If you want to go and ask your payroll provider if they can give you that, quite a few can't uh, because it is hidden and it is proprietary. And it doesn't actually allow you to double check and confirm what is being sent to HMRC because unfortunately, sometimes HMRC don't correctly and accurately reflect uh, what is being submitted uh, by yourselves. Uh, and when we get involved in those conversations, we know exactly what's been sent. We can demonstrate it. We can tell HMRC what it was uh, and touch wood, 100% uh, of those conversations that we've had uh, have all been in the favor of our customers. Once the FPS has been done on a per pay run basis, uh, we then move to uh, the employer payment summary, uh, which takes care of your statutory recoverables, your apprenticeship levy can be split out across uh, other PAYE schemes within the system if necessary. Uh, and of course, we're also going to take care of those allowances, uh, your claim for employment allowance. You know, if you've got less than £100,000 in employer's national insurance, you're eligible for your £4,000 this year, which obviously was a change from last year. Uh, and another of the developments that we did and released as part of the, um, uh, the new tax year release that we did uh, earlier this year in March which then all feeds in again directly into your reporting into your p32 uh, because at the end of it what we're aiming for from a reconciliation perspective is on a per period basis hopefully uh, although sometimes of course because of adjustments uh, uh, this uh, uh, might not be the case but certainly on a year-to-day basis uh, we are looking at getting these figures matching to the penny with hmrc if they're not we're going to know about it immediately and it's much easier to work out uh, and make sure that they're correct moving forward when it's happening in the period than having to do it in years past. Once you are at this stage, your pay run is complete for the period uh, and you're ready to rinse, repeat, uh, build it up into the next period uh, and carry on uh, with the day job and running your business. 
that concludes the pay run process and overview that I wanted to give you today. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I will hand back uh, to Alan for any questions. Yeah, thanks, Tristan. That's great. Thanks very much. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple of questions here um, from the panel. So there's a question about how long would it take to implement the system and does it have to be done at a payroll year end? So the, uh, we will always target doing an elapsed time from about three months uh, because we want to do two periods of parallel comparison uh, to verify and validate the system. So uh, obviously the number of hours of actual time that would be spent within those, uh, those months will vary based on the size and complexity of the business. Um, uh, so, but we want to get that done in a discrete project from three months start to finish. Uh, in terms of whether or not we do it at the tax year end, uh, that is historically when people would like to do it. Um, actually, for us, there are two really good times to do an implementation uh, that are the least risk and the least cost. Uh, one is a go live in month one, uh, and the other is a go live in the third period uh, because of the virtue of us doing those two periods of comparison. Uh, if we talk about monthly periods going live in April, or going live in June are, are just as easy and, and have the same costs and risks associated with it. That being said, uh, we have gone live with some customers in March. Uh, uh, they didn't really have a choice to do that. Um, uh, as a rule, however, I would suggest that uh, uh, if we can get it done, ideally we want to get it done before Christmas. Uh, anything after that uh, tends to be because you have to rather than because you want to. Okay, thanks. Uh, and another question on licenses then, are there additional licenses needed to, to run the software? Um, only for, so uh, is, is that NetSuite licenses? Um, it doesn't say in the question, so just any. Okay. How's, how's your software license, Macbeth, if you explain how, how it works? Gotcha, fine. So um, certainly uh, you do not need a NetSuite license for every employee we pay. Uh, it's just a NetSuite record and they do not need access. Um, so, you know, we've got uh, installs where there's only a, you know, five or 10 t p person finance team that are on there and they're paying hundreds of people. Uh, the only licenses that uh, they need from that are from us. Uh, and our license very uh, much mirrors the NetSuite licensing model. So we do an annual license. Uh, we do pro raters mid period and we have an annual renewal. Um, and it is based on the number of employees that you are going to pay in a calendar month. Uh, so, you know, if you're on a weekly pay frequency and you're paying 4.3 weeks uh, every month, then uh, that's fine. That's still just one person that you're paying in a calendar month. Um, and uh, whether that person changes every month or something like that, it matters not to us. Uh, it's purely based on the number of people you're paying within that period. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and uh, I think a final question is uh, if we're using a different HR system or sweet people eventually, how will your system integrate with that? So uh, I'll take the, 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 the separate HR system one first, because uh, again, you know, that's the most common uh, situation that we come across at the moment. Uh, and uh, obviously working out where the master of truth uh, sits for employee data in that instance most commonly you know things like home address bank details uh, all that sort of stuff will sit in the HR system may even do pay reviews and stuff like that uh, and then it will be a CSV import uh, is where I, I will always start as, as a CSV import yes there are some systems that have an API connection to NetSuite some of our customers uh, have built API connections uh, into NetSuite to, to push that data but I know that we can do a very seamless CSV import from things like Bamboo, uh, clean use Kronos, for example, uh, where you're updating, you know, 1200 employees on a, on a weekly basis, it takes 30 minutes. Uh, you bring them in, you pull some logic, it creates your salaries and those sorts of things. So uh, from a third party system, let's start off with CSV uh, and work up from there. Uh, sweet people, of course, uh, we're all looking forward to because it's going to expand the capabilities of uh, NetSuite and uh, make it possible 
uh, for uh, more customers to use NetSuite and not have to use those third party systems. Uh, and the expectation is that when that goes live, uh, from a UK payroll perspective, because uh, NetSuite, of course, only offer payroll in the US, uh, from a UK payroll perspective, uh, we're very keen and uh, prepped to do the development that is required to make sure that any of our customers who do want to use Sweet People or any Sweet People customers that do want to use us will be able to do so in the same seamless manner uh, that hopefully we've demonstrated today uh, because we work very hard to blur the lines between what is Infinite Cloud and what is NetSuite. If you can't tell, then we've done a great job. Okay. I think that answers all the questions then. So um, I think it just leaves us to say thank you very much to firstly to Wayne and, and Tristan for doing the, the presentation for us today. That's been great. Um, and thanks to everybody who's attended as well. Um, if you have any questions uh, on this or would like to set up a more detailed discussion or demonstration, um, then please just get in touch with your, your account manager and we'll be happy to set that up for you. Um, but yeah, thanks again to everybody and yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you everyone.